frosty, frosty Saturday morning, very end of October. And I'm out on the bank. And luckily it's a spot that I can fish right out of the back of the van pretty much. Um, rods are just down, down there, uh, bottom of the hill. So if I get inter interrupted, um, I apologize. But I thought I'd take a few minutes right now to talk about hook patterns. Uh, in particular, my my favorite hook patterns, um, or particular patterns. Let's talk about hooks. <laughs> um, when it comes down to it, you know, as long as I've been doing this channel, uh, which is just about nine years now, uh, so I think we're at eight and a half years uh, that I've been doing the channel. Started in. Um, kind of mid-2014 uh, when we officially launched on YouTube. Uh, that very first episode uh, that we did, I used a carp hook for the first time, like an actual carp hook. Uh, before that, I was just using whatever trout hooks I had. Uh, you know, Mustad, Raven, uh, Eagle Claw, uh, just a lot of you know, standard hooks, uh, and in some cases even like very basic bait holder hooks like you would use for fishing with live bait. Um, they caught me fish, but that very first episode, you know, I, I had some, some issues with the hooks. Uh, I think a couple of them broke if I remember right, uh, and I was just not getting the hookups I needed. But I had a pack of actual carp hooks in the pack with me, or in the bag with me, and uh, yeah, what a game changer. Uh, and that was the Monster Carp Tackle Universal Perfection hooks. Um, I don't remember if it was a size two or a size four I used way back then, but um, you know, size two, size four, size sixes I have used over the years, size four being my favorite. Um, I'll take out the size twos if I'm fishing on the big river. And I might go down to the size sixes if I'm fishing, you know, one of the small ponds that I go to with my son. Uh, I have used the eights. Uh, yeah. Very, very few applications for me to use the eights um, effectively. But the size four in the universal per perfection has been my go-to standard hook. Um, you know, it's, it's not quite a curve shank. It, it's... I would say it, this pattern is basically your standard run-of-the-mill carp hook. And, you know, it's, it's caught me a lot of fish uh, from only, you know, a few inches long uh, right up to over 40 pounds. Now, the particular thing I like about this hook is its robustness, its durability. Uh, in all the years that I've been using these hooks, I think I've only ever broken one, and that was trying to pull it out of a snag. Um, just like any other hook, yes, you've dulled points and um, nicked the barb and stuff like that. But one great thing about these hooks is that they sharpen very easily, and you can keep going on the same hook. You don't have to change this hook after every fish like so many anglers do. Um, quick sharpen. And away you go. I've had over 30 fish on the same hook multiple, multiple times. You know, I can't afford to be buying hooks over and over and over again. Most Canadian anglers, uh, anglers worldwide, can't just keep buying tons and tons of tackle uh, after every bite. You know, here in Canada, we get a lot of fish. You know, wh whereas other places, you might be going out for a session you know, three days long, and one fish will be a win. You know, I go out for three hours, there's a very real possibility I can have 10 fish in that time frame. Even today, freezing cold, it's, it's like one degree out today. I'm fishing a big calm water. I've seen no shows whatsoever. Had a few liners, but, you know, conditions are not optimal with bright sun, but, when these fish move in, I could very easily get a big hit of fish in a very short period of time. I don't, I don't want to be changing out rigs. That's not practical. Um, I don't want to have to constantly be sharpening my hooks. 
these have been the toughest carp hook I have used to date. And we're gonna go into a few of the others that I have used that are kind of more recent to my arsenal. Um, but I've used a lot of different hooks from a lot of different companies and these by far are the toughest hooks I've used yet. So, I can't really say enough to praise these uh, because I think they're that good. However, there have been times where I feel that it was the hook pattern uh, that maybe is the reason that I lost a particular fish. Uh, you know, I just didn't get the hook hold I had hoped for. So I've, I've made a point of using other companies' hooks to compare. You can't have an opinion on one without having an opinion on others. You know, it's the comparison that, that helps you determine what it is you're after. So looking at these other companies' hooks and other types, it's, uh, it's interesting how similar yet how different they are. Some of them have these long needle sharp points that, you know, if you look at it the wrong way, it, it, it dings the point and the hook's useless. Uh, a lot of those fine point hooks, I, I find they just don't sharpen the way I need them to. So I've been, I've been experimenting over a number of years now, trying whatever company's hooks I could get my hands on, seeing, you know, how, how to make them work in my fishing. And unfortunately, most of them just aren't up for the task of the way I fish. I, I'm rough on gear. Right? I don't... Let's just say I don't fish carefully. I really don't. I get my rigs out there. I'm hoping a fish takes. And I'm roughing it in. You know, I, I want to get out and get as many bites as possible, as quickly as possible. So in, in some venues, you know, certainly over in Europe and, and the UK, where those really fine points are key because you might only get that one pickup in a week uh, or a month. You're typically fishing over, you know, a clay patch or a tiny gravel patch in a, in a big silty 20 acre lake. You know, it's not the kind of fishing that I do. I'm on wild venues, they're rough, they're rugged, you know, the one I'm on in particular right now, there's there's hundreds of years of history on this particular piece of water. There could be chains and timber and just concrete, rock, everything could be down there. And I could be fishing right amongst it all. So I need durable hooks that I, I don't have to constantly work on to get the most out of them. So, you know, over the last couple of years, as I said, I've tried so many others, and one of the hooks that I actually kind of gave a, a, what I thought was a fair shot were the ESP Cryogen gripper hooks. Um, the other hook that's similar to this that I used was the, uh, the Raven Specialist hook, which is a trout fishing hook, but they're very, very similar, these two, uh, those two in particular. Um, they've got a wide gape, they've got a beaked point, and a sh relatively short shank. Big eye as well. A and I found these to be very good, kind of all-around hooks. I could use them just about anywhere. I could go stalking with uh, a very short hair. I could rig them German style with a bait screw. Uh, I could do a tube blowback rig on them, and it's still, still very effective. It's a, it's a very good all-around hook, but there are times when for whatever reason, it just, it just doesn't sting them the right way. But, you know, putting these two together, you know, having, having these two in my arsenal, being able to switch back and forth, you know, as I felt the situation required it, been able to catch a lot of fish. Still, you know, as, as with everybody, you know, the more fish you catch, the more fish you're going to lose as well. Um, but I'm always on that lookout for that hook that's going to lose me less fish. You know, 99% of it is, you know, how I'm playing it, I'm sure, but it's that hook hold. I'm trying to find out the, the, the hook that gives us the right kind of hook hold for the type of fish I'm after. A lot of places that I go, some of them, the, the fish will have really tiny mouths. 
other places I go, like where I am today, the fish have like gaping mouths with big, huge, rough, rugged lips from where they're eating zebra mussels and stuff out of all the bottom debris. Um, so if I'm if I'm fishing those fish with the bigger mouths, you know, I want those wider gape, more robust hooks that are going to really dig in and hold. If I'm fishing the, after the fish with the tinier mouths and more delicate, I'm going to use something with a, a much smaller gate. But these two, the, the grippers, the cryogen grippers and the Monster Carp Universal Perfection, have been really great for the types of rigs that I've been using. Now, pretty much a year ago to last week, um, actually fishing where I am today, I started using the Corda Chlor hooks. Now, these were something I, I went to to try because a lot of friends I have use the um, the Gardner Mugga hooks where they have that really pronounced um, downturned eye. I never really thought much of it, uh, but they all swear by that hook and I thought, well, you know what? Looks like Corda just had come out with one that was very similar. I have come to like Corda hooks. Uh, most of the patterns, not all, but most of them. Certainly the Chotties. By the way, Chotty hooks in by any brand, they're all the same. Never had an issue with any Chotty hooks from any brand. The other hook patterns, however, there are clearly ones that I stay away from. Um, but I don't care what, what company it's from. If it's a Chotty hook, it's, it's good stuff. Um, so yeah, on this particular venue, I tried the Corda Chlor. And out of that first pack I had, that first pack of 10, in, I think they were size 2s that I started with. Um, actually, funny enough, these are size 2s as well. Size 2, 4s are my favorite. 6s are good as well, but the 4s are my favorite. Um, that first pack of 10, two of those hooks broke on fish for me. Uh, I also found that the points were dinging quite a bit uh, over what I was fishing. And... I was disappointed. However, I still had some of the hooks and I had gotten low on the other ones I had and just out of necessity, I used the rest of what I had of the quarter claws. I don't know what it is about those first few, but after that initial issue with them, man, these have become a major part of my arsenal. Every outing I'm out on now, at least one rod will have one of these hooks on with a, with my German rig on it. I, I absolutely love these because I don't need any extras. And by extras, I mean when I'm tying my rig, I can just tie my German rig to this. I don't need any uh, line aligners. I don't need any added stuff on the hook. I don't need to, I don't, I won't do a tube blowback rig with this. Um, you know, my German rig with a bait screw or a swivel to floss if I wanted to use a, like a snowman presentation or a much bigger bait. Um, these hooks are amazing. Um, they seem to also have a wider gape, so they dig in and they really hold those fish with the bigger, rougher mouths. Um, that downturned eye is a built-in aligner, but I also find that it kind of it kind of holds, it grips. Once it gets into that bottom lip, kind of back in the middle, and the eye kind of curves down over the outer part of the lip, it just becomes like a vice, and it just holds that fish in place. So, I got really, really impressed with these hooks very quickly after I gave it that second chance, and they've stayed in my arsenal ever since. Uh, right now, I have, my right-hand rod has one of these hooks on it, uh, it's just simply German rig with a pop-up. The, the amount of big fish that I've had with these hooks is exceptional. Uh, you know, with, with any hooks that I use, we're, we're catching fish of every size. But the number of big fish that I've managed to get to the net, I find is a higher ratio than the other patterns that I use. You know, when we go back a year ago to this spot, when I was having that initial trouble, 
jumped in and had it, gave it a second chance. Immediately I started, I, I had a 31 pounder, um, a 27, and a number of low 20s over the course of two or three days. Get through the winter time, uh, go into early spring this past April, fishing out on the, on the Great Lakes, Great uh, Lake Ontario. Uh, I had a 32 and a 40 pound eight. Um, after that, same hooks, same same core hook. Um, like three weeks later, I went out and had uh, another 30, a bunch of mid 20s, and a 38 10. Um, all of these fish have been able to get. I've been able to. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, the left hand rod rose, and uh, the bobbin lifted and fell, but. I can just see that the line's still in the line clip. It's the first liner I've had for a while. <laughs> now the hook on that rod, um, we'll get to in a few minutes. But that is, I have a different hook on each rod. Um, same rig on the right and the middle. Uh, different rig on the left. I know a lot of people don't fish that way, but I do because I, I want to, I'm always experimenting. It's, for me, it's not always about uh, catching everything. It's about seeing what works. And, you know, if I get one on the German rig on the, the chlor hook um, and it's absolutely nailed, I'll, I'll probably switch that, uh, one of the other rods to that. If I catch again, maybe all three. But I also have this theory of, you know, once you've had one or two fish, you, you've saved your blank, you've been successful, you might as well experiment. Uh, so I've been finding that I'm just kind of experimenting from the get-go, no matter what. I'm always trying something different on one of the rods. Anywho, um, these chlor hooks, uh, I, I, I kind of consider these now my big fish hooks, um, but I, I use these pretty exclusively for my German rig, and that's it. I don't really use these on any other rig. Uh, not with a hair rig, uh, not with a blowback rig, nothing like nothing like that. Um, I have tried these on uh, like a Ronnie rig, like a, the spinner rig, uh, with a section of boom. And I've had a bunch of fish with them. I don't. I don't. Re I haven't really made up my mind on how I like that yet. But uh, at the end of the day, fishing my German rig with these hooks, I have landed a lot more big fish than I think I would have landed with other hook patterns. Now, this is probably the newest one to my arsenal. This is a very, very heavy gauge hook, and I've only been using this for. Two months or so but I've been fishing the, the, the big river the Niagara River uh, a lot a lot this year actually and uh, you know one of the big things about fishing there is that you're gonna ding hook points you need a really strong hook that once it gets in it holds but even the small fish go bananas and use the current to their advantage because it's a fast flowing river um, you know, you might have 30, 40, 50, 60 pound braid on. Your hook's not always up to the task, especially if it's a lighter wire hook. And, you know, it, it's really tough to keep those hook holds. So, just like what I was using with the ESP um, gripper hooks, you know, I, I've also kind of dabbled with some of those hex shape wide gape hooks um, and, and had some success but this one I didn't even know this existed until recently I, I knew about the wide gape and the wide gape X but I didn't know they had a double X so I, I got the wide gape double X now I've, I've tried this with my German rig with the bait screw uh, and I also tried this with actually this is what's on the left hand rod with the two blowback rig and I know it seems like a very short, stubby hook to be doing that, but um, it's, it's worked. I've had a number of good fish over the last what, two months that I've been using it. 
and I haven't even so much as dinged the point on these, uh, which was surprising to me. Uh, so many of these company, uh, companies, but uh, Quarter in particular, make very, very sharp, pointy hooks. And usually I have to have that file at the ready quite a bit. Uh, I've had a number of, number of fish with this, uh, this really heavy gauge hook, uh, especially during some night sessions recently. And I haven't even had to redo the point. You know, get the fish in, check it, it's good, whip it back out, get another fish. So, as far as durability goes, this so far has been another really good hook, this, this wide gate double X. Now, will it stand the test of time the way this hook has, the, the universal perfection? Um, who knows? It's a very heavy hook, so, you know, maybe when those fish are being a little bit more sensitive with how they're feeding, this might be too much hook but certainly when they're active when I've been fishing the big river it's done the business you know I've had a couple of I haven't had any big fish for a, for a little while um, but I've had a lot of like, like after yeah after July I had a bunch of big fish in July and then after that it's just kind of been like right at that 20 pound mark and, and lower but they've been strong. Like river fish, are, especially Niagara River fish, are so strong. And, and these stronger hooks, you know, I get those fish in and there's no movement, there's no play. That hook is in and it's locked. And I really, really like that. So, yeah, the, these four patterns have kind of become my main arsenal. And, you know, one of them has been around for a long, long time. That one right, th that one right there. Uh, the Monster Carp Tackle Universal Perfection. That that has been, and I, honestly, I think I can safely say, always will be my go-to, ready to rock hook because it does the job. But dabbling with some of these other patterns, you know, as I learn more about the venues I'm fishing, and I learn more about when I can target bigger fish, when it's appropriate to target smaller fish. Uh, when I know what strains I'm after, whether they have really small mouths or really big mouths. Um, as I'm learning more about that, these other hook patterns are coming into play and definitely putting more fish in the net than I think I would have had if I just stuck with one pattern. Um, so there you go. My top four hook patterns, I guess, or hook, hook brands, patterns, makes, whatever you want to call them. But they're what's getting me fish. Hopefully, they'll do the same for you.